Well, good day. We bless the name of the Lord. We thank you for tuning in to this YouTube channel, and we pray something will be said to help you along your way today. We want to get right into it. We want to turn our attention to uh, the book of Titus. The book of Titus is our starting point. We will make references to other passages of Scripture, but for our starting point today, Titus chapter 2, verse 11. God bless you all for tuning in to my granddaughter Moriah. God bless you as well. Titus chapter 2, verse 11. From the King James Version. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men. Allow me to read that from the New Living Translation. Again, Titus chapter 2, verse 11. For the grace of God has been revealed, bringing salvation to all people. I want to talk today about amazing grace. Amazing grace. The Bible in many instances informs us that trouble will come our way. Trials and tribulation heartache and pain but during these times the Word of God provides us with the tools needed to come through these seasons the word instructs us to lean not into our own understanding the word instructs us to pray without ceasing to trust in the Lord and allow the Spirit of God to lead guide and comfort us but in addition to those things, I would like to add one more thing that will sustain us and I personally know has sustained me. We must remember and embrace the amazing grace of God. What is the first thing that comes to mind when you think of the words amazing grace? For some, amazing grace brings to mind two particular songs. The first, a popular hymn in the church world written by John Newton. It says, Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I was once lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. And while the first verse moved everyone it is the second verse that tells my story twas grace that taught my heart to fear and grace my fears relieved how precious did that grace appear the hour I first believed what a wonderful song but then there's a second song written by Marshall Hall entitled he looked beyond my faults the song says, Amazing Grace shall always be my song of praise, for it was grace that bought my liberty. I do not know just how he came to love me so. He looked beyond my faults and saw my needs. What a wonderful picture and description of God's amazing grace. And while both gentlemen have wonderfully captured the essence of the Lord's grace in their lyrics, we want to share with you today that His grace is still amazing. My wife and I have been blessed to travel to various places and see the amazing sights in those places. We have been blessed to travel to the Grand Canyon and view the handiwork of God and standing there viewing this carefully carved out canyon there was nothing to be said but amazing we have been to the Niagara Falls to witness the water this wonder water wonder as the water flows towards the drop-off point you can see the great amount of water being transformed into a powerful force dropping approximately 158 feet. It leaves one saying to themselves, amazing. 
We have had the opportunity to sail on the seas. We have seen the calm waves turn into violent storm waves. We have seen the vastness of the great bodies of water. We have seen the sunrise and set over the ocean background. These things have left us saying, amazing. But even though these wonders were amazing, there's one thing that is more amazing than all these put together, and that is God's amazing grace. The text today and other verses informs us about this amazing grace. Let's look at our text verse today, Titus chapter 2 verse 11. Again it says, For the grace of God has been revealed, bringing salvation to all people. Sin had us blind in living in darkness. But when Jesus came into our lives, that darkness became light and our blindness was removed. There are many that have chosen not to accept Him, but for those who have, you have realized the revelation of the grace of God through Jesus Christ. The second revelation that one will come to is that salvation is for everybody. Salvation is not for one particular race. Salvation is not for one particular location or zip code. Salvation is not for one political affiliation. Salvation is not just for men, it's not just for women, it's not just for children. Salvation is for all that receives it. And for me, that is amazing. The Apostle Paul in the book of Ephesians, in chapter 2, shares his thoughts on God's amazing grace. In chapter 2, verses 4 through 6, Paul says this, he says, But God is so rich in mercy, and He loved us so much, that even though we were dead because of our sins, He gave us life when He raised Christ from the dead. It is only by God's grace that you have been saved. For He raised us from the dead along with Christ, and seated us with Him in the heavenly realms, because we are united with Christ. Verse 4 tells us that God is rich in mercy and that He loved us so much. And verse 5 tells us that it's by God's grace we are saved. Love and mercy have done what nothing else would do. Love and mercy have brought us through. Love and mercy has delivered us. Love and mercy has provided for us. Love and mercy has protected us. Love and mercy has healed us. Love and mercy has forgiven us. And because of God's love and mercy, He has executed and put in play His grace to give us life while we were yet dead in our sins. We were dead to life. We were dead to salvation. We were dead to healing and deliverance. But through God's amazing grace, the Lord brought us from death to life. A lot of us were ex-something. None of us have been perfect. Some may be an ex-thief. Some may be an ex-alcoholic. Some may be an ex-adulterer. Some may be an ex-fornicator. Some may be an ex-dope user or pusher. Some may be an ex-cheat or liar. And if some will tell the truth, they are still practicing the things that they have been delivered from. But even in that truth, I know that God's grace is still amazing. But what is even more amazing is verse 6. Verse 6 tells us that God has seated us alongside Christ in the heavenly realms. We are, as the Bible describes, joint heirs with Christ, which means we get to enjoy the things that Christ enjoyed. The Bible says we are part of a royal priesthood. That means we are kings and queens in the heavenly realms. I want you to know today, saints, that we are part of God's family. And because we are part of God's family, we're only there because of His amazing grace. The Apostle Paul in that same chapter, 
verse 8 and 9, he says, God saved you by his grace when you believed. And you can't take credit for this. It is a gift from God. Salvation is not a reward for the good things we have done. So none of us can boast about it. Salvation is not given by man. It's given by God. No man can take credit for having salvation. No woman can take credit for having salvation. No one race can take credit for having salvation. GM, Ford, and Chrysler, with all the cars and trucks they have made, cannot take credit for salvation. Chase, Comerica, Fifth Third, and other banks, with all the money they hold and deposit, cannot take credit for salvation. Beaumont, Henry Ford, St. John, McLaren Hospital, with all their medical capabilities, cannot take credit for salvation. T. Rowe Price, BlackRock, the Vanguard Group, and other investment groups with their investment abilities cannot take credit for salvation. It's only the amazing grace of God that we have salvation. Look at Hebrews chapter 4, verse 16. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 16. New Living Translation says, So let us come boldly to the throne of our gracious God. There we will receive his mercy, and we will find grace to help us when we need it most. I want you to know, my beloved, when we are struggling with our struggles, when we are contending with our contentions, when we are dealing with our many demons, when we are fighting our many fallacies, when we seem to be stuck in our sins, we can go boldly to the throne of grace, and there we will receive mercy for all of our issues. Not just some of our issues, not just a few of our issues, not just one or two of our issues, but we will receive mercy for all of our issues, for all of our sins. But then in addition to receiving mercy, we will receive grace to help us when we need it most. There were times we may have thought we were not going to make it, but grace came in right on time. Won't he do it? There were times that we thought about giving up, but grace came in right on time. Won't he do it? There were times we felt like we were the only ones doing what God wanted us to, to do. We felt all alone, but grace came right in on time and gave us what we needed. Won't he do it? That's amazing grace. Finally, the Apostle Paul in Hebrews chapter 13, verse 9, again from the New Living Translation, it says, Do not be attracted by strange new ideas. Your strength comes from God's grace, not from rules about food which don't help those who follow them. While the Apostle Paul was addressing those questioning rules about food, Paul's statement transcends just food. We are not to be attracted by strange new ideas. Yes, trouble comes, but don't fall for strange new ideas on how to handle those troubles. Yes, difficulties will come, but don't fall for strange new ideas on how to handle those difficulties. Yes, heartaches will come, but do not fall for strange new ideas on how to cope with those heartaches. Yes, yoga is not your answer. Worldly meditation is not your answer. Oriental thoughts and religions are not your answer. Mystical gurus and fortune tellers are not your answer. Horoscopes and astrologies are not your answer. But God's amazing grace is the answer. Paul says that our strength comes from grace. That's amazing. It was amazing grace that brought us another week. It was amazing grace 
that let us lay down and go to sleep last night. It was amazing grace that protected us while we slept last night. It was amazing grace that woke us up this morning. It was amazing grace that touched us this morning. It was amazing grace that kept us in our right mind. It was amazing grace who let us see the sunrise today. Yes, His grace is truly amazing. Let me give a personal testimony. It was amazing grace that brought me through some dark times in my life. It was amazing grace that kept me encouraged while there were those trying to discourage me. It was amazing grace that soothed many of my heartaches. It was amazing grace that kept me focused when others went their own direction. It was amazing grace that brought this little boy from Sedalia, Missouri to the place I am now. It is not because of my education. It is not because of my ingenuity. It is not because I can figure out a few things. It is because of God's amazing grace. What kind of grace? A sounding grace, a saving grace, a secure grace, a sufficient grace, a loving grace, a forgiving grace, a everlasting grace, but most importantly, an amazing grace. Amazing grace. Oh, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. His grace is amazing. It's amazing. It's amazing. It's amazing. God's grace is amazing. We pray that something was said to help you today, for His grace is truly amazing. It can help you right where you are right now. Don't let the devil fool you. Don't let the devil trick you. Don't let the devil make you think that there's no hope for you. The devil is a master liar. He's trying to destroy you. He's trying to keep you from your help. God's grace can transform you right where you are. Just pray along with me and come into the family of God. Pray with me. Father, I am a sinner in your sight. I have done many wrongs, but I pray for mercy and I pray for your grace. I give my life to you right now. I believe that Jesus is and that he is able, and that he came, hung, bled, and died, and was resurrected for my salvation. I put my, my heart and my soul in his hands. I trust in him now. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. If you prayed that prayer with me, and you truly believe in your heart that you have surrendered your life to Christ, you are now a part of the family of God. We ask that you become part of a Bible-believing church where you can learn more about who God is and how you can get closer to Him. While in the meantime, I'm asking you to embrace His amazing grace. It will sustain you and keep you, not just today, but in the days to come. With that being said, have a wonderful day. Until the next time, peace be with you. Bye-bye.